an alcoholic drink brewed from rice and water, sake is quintessentially Japanese. But with its rich flavor refined over centuries by skilled brewers, it has recently achieved worldwide popularity. Sake brewers create that flavor using traditional techniques that date back to the 17th century. The master brewer is in charge of brewing, and Philip Harper is the only foreign master sake brewer in the whole of Japan. Harper has been involved in sake brewing for 20 years. His quest is to produce the ultimate sake. He uses every ounce of his skill to make the sake he sees in his mind's eye a reality. Harper's sake is known for its fruity bouquets and for how it captures the sweetness of rice. It has won the top prize at Japan's national new sake connoisseur contest. Today we'll meet the British-born master sake brewer Philip Harper and learn about his methods and determination. Hello and welcome to Begin Japanology. I'm Peter Barakan. Today we present another in our series of Japanophiles and the Japanophile I've come to see here in Kyotango, which is a fairly remote part of central Japan on the coast of the Sea of Japan, is Philip Harper, who is a sake brewer. This area is well known for the quality of its rice and also for copious natural water that flows down from the surrounding mountains out of melted snow. And with both rice and water, you can imagine there's lots of sake breweries too. Hello. Hi. Hi, how do you do? We finally got here. <laughs> Welcome, <laughs> through the snow. <laughs> Good to see you. I'm looking forward to this one. I'm a okay. big sake fan. Great, so. all right. Do you want to see the brewery then? Sure, great. Okay. So this is the, uh, the fermentation room. This is where we do the mashing and the, the main fermentation place. Oh, it's that distinctive aroma you get from brewing sake, don't you? Uh. There's, there's uh, fermenting sake in the tanks up here. In a moment, we'll go upstairs and you can have a look at the, uh, at the stuff actually bubbling and seething away. This season, Harper's Brewery is fermenting so, 120,000 litres of sake in 54 tanks. Right. Uh, and the owner's family have been um, kicking around this. Yet. So this, this, we mushed this yesterday. Uh -huh. um, uh, and it, it's still still very stiff at this stage. You can just see the, the yeast starting to uh, bubble up through the cracks right. there as it begins. You can still see I mean, this, basically uh, rice particles up there, so it's still very stiff and not, not liquid at this point. And then two days later it would look like this, so this is two days further on. And the foam now has covered the, the whole surface of the mash there, and you can't see any of the grains of rice I was going to say, you don't actually see anymore. the bubbling. No, the, it's, all, it's all covered with this foam now. Right. Uh, and, and that one over there, that's on day six now, so the foam is almost at its peak now. Uh -huh. uh, and that funny little machine whirring away that's to stop the foam actually overflowing out of the oh, right. out of the vat. Uh -huh. And you can just see here, I mean, the, the, the yeast is just starting to bowl up through the cracks here. This is just the beginning of fermentation. Right, right you, you do get the impression of it being a sort of living thing, don't you? <laughs> well, it, it's, it's a, an awful lot of living things in there, in fact. <laughs> I mean, it's, it's all, obviously yeast is uh, microscopic, so you can't see it, but I mean, you do get this uh, e e enormous amount of energy from the fermentation. Mm. Harper is the master brewer at a sake brewery that boasts a 170-year history. It's now late January. The high season for sake brewing is the dead of winter. It's the busiest time of year for Harper and the four people in his team. The first step in sake making is sprinkling spores of a special mold onto steamed rice. The mold grows on the rice to create koji, a cultured substance that plays a key role in creating the goodness and sweetness of sake. Now the mashing can begin. Steamed rice and water are mixed with the koji together with yeast. The koji converts the rice starch into sugars and the yeast breaks down these sugars into alcohol. One challenge of sake brewing is that these two chemical reactions happen at the same time in the same tank.
Also, this technique produces a beverage that is 20% alcohol or more. Sake is stronger than any other drink that's brewed. Philip Harper was born in 1966 in Cornwall, in the southwest of England. He encountered sake when he came to Japan to teach English. When he was 22, Harper was astonished by a sake that he drank at a Japanese pub. From that point on, sake became his life. What have you got lined up for me to try here? Well, I mean, we, have, we make lots of different styles, but I thought I'd give you three just to give you some idea of, uh, kind okay. of, of the range of what we do. Okay. Oh, you I can, can see, see the colour difference for a start. And I can see this one's going to be different again. Okay, wow. So, uh, colour colour gradation for a start. Yeah. And if you, if you, before you drink them, if you want to have a, a, a sniff of each one and see okay. how, how different start they smell. Start here. Yeah, start there, okay. I should think. Ooh, I wouldn't have even said that was sake, you know, if I just smelled that. <laughs> Don't know what I it would have said is, it though. is. This is made from a 300-year-old recipe. Ooh. That's almost like a sweet sherry or something, yeah. isn't it? Well, wine people, they, they tend to come up with the ice wine, with the, the very sweet German uh, wines, or, okay. or, or noble rot wines. Mm. Yeah, yeah, or maybe dessert wine almost. Right, yeah. Right. That's the Actually, kind of it's... That. That's the first time I've had anything like that, but it's uh, it's, it's actually quite nice. Yeah, you we, you might want to. I'm I might want to have it after the meal rather than with the meal. I don't that's know. Right. Well, I mean, oh. uh, originally we, we we made this to go with ice cream, um, which oh. it, which it does very well. But oh. we we've also discovered that it goes really well with really salty Japanese delicacies. Oh, uh, and okay. uh, foie gras and, and a whole range of things. So in, okay. we, um, yeah. it's, a, it's kind of an extreme sake, but it, it has a much wider range than I think you, you think from the first Yeah, impression. very interesting, that one. Next, our presenter tries a daiginjo. Daiginjo is made using a labour-intensive process in which the rice is polished down by at least 50%. The result is a clean, crisp flavour. Mm. It's a very sort of um, um, robust... Mm. Daiginjo. I mean, daiginjo comes in all sorts of, well, as you know, yeah. <laughs> varieties, but um, yeah, I, I like that, I must say. I, I'm not a daiginjo fan normally, actually. I, I, I tend to go for ones that are slightly less fruity, but that is very well balanced. Thank from, you, thank you. From, from well, me we, anyway. we, down yeah. in the west of Japan, we tend to do things with a bit more punch. Mm. You get sake in all different temperatures, don't you? Yes, yeah. One of the, the great pleasures of sake drinking it. Most of our customers who drink this will be drinking it cold, whereas uh, I personally would, would almost never drink the one in the middle cold at all. I much prefer it warm. Mm. Uh, and How warm? Well, there's, there's warm and there's hot, and I mean, there's a whole range of uh, expressions in Japanese to cover these. Right. Um, from, from, from cold temperatures right up to, up to very hot indeed. How hot does it get at the hottest? Well, the standard orthodox opinion is, is, is what's called atsukan, which is, is, is hot, hot, right. uh, is, is about 55 degrees. Yeah. Uh, and the, 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 the very mildly warm version is called nurukan. Or lukewarm. Yeah, yeah which, which yeah. doesn't sound very nice, but it's, right. it's, it's, a, it's a, a really nice uh, temperature to drink at. A little higher than body temperature, probably. Right. And I mean, if you take it right down to body temperature, there's a word for that, of course, hitohadakan, which means the temperature of people's skin. Right. And so there are all these lovely expressions to do it with as well. Uh, and playing around with temperature is really one of the, the great joys of sake. And we're so used to playing around with finding the sweet, the sweet spot of a specific ta ta sake, which is a different temperature for every sake, of course. Oh, right. Yeah. Harper's brewing career began in 1991 three years after he came to Japan. He took a job at an old sake brewery in Nara Prefecture. There he learned the entire sake making process, from polishing and washing the rice to preparing the koji. Originally, sake was made by seasonal laborers. Farmers looking for work during their off season would be hired in groups at breweries. The most skilled among them would be given the job of leading the brewing process. They were called toji, or master brewers, a title that still exists. With long years of experience and well-honed instincts, master brewers direct the other workers in the making of good sake. 
Harper himself became a master brewer after 15 years of study. The brewery where Harper currently works hired him in 2006. It was a testament to his great skill. Lots of people like to drink sake, but not all that many actually get into making it. Mm. What put you on that path? Well, I, mean, I, they, I became friends with these two uh, young Japanese men, um, and they were, they were keen on sake, so we, we started going out drinking sake together, and, and people were saying to us all the time that, um, that there's, there's never been a better time to drink sake, that there are all these new exciting things going mm. on that, that, that were at, the, at the, the, the culminating peak of 300 years of an artisan tradition. Mm. Um, but that the, in, in those days, sake was almost all made by um, craftsmen from the traditional brewers' guilds. Right. Um, but at the same time, the, the brewers' guilds were, uh, were sort of reaching the point where they were unable to find young people to come in and, and take over and carry on the tradition. So there was a, a real manpower crisis uh -huh. in the industry. Uh -huh. and so on the one hand, people were telling us that, that it was the best time ever to be drinking sake. And on the other hand, they were saying, but in another 10 years, there won't be anyone around with the skills to make this stuff. And so the people I first started working with were, uh, the, the youngest in the group was in his late 50s. And most, the mm. average age of sake brewers, even back then, was, uh, was about 60 or more. So, I mean, for somebody who's coming into Japan, not even really being familiar with, you know, this whole Japanese society, mm. it must have been tough at times. It wasn't an easy environment and live and work in the brewery through the roughly six months of the, the brewing season. So it was, uh, you, you're on, on duty 24 hours a day basically. And so the, the last session of communal work was at about nine o'clock in the evening and the next day started at uh, half past five or six o'clock. So, um, the, you know, there's, there's, not, there's not time to watch a, a complete film on the, on the TV in, in the six months of the brewing season. Wow. It, it has its own rules in the, so the, the, the master brewer reads the newspaper first and he's the second in command reads and it, everything from newspapers to bath time, it goes in oh, order okay. of seniority, huh. um, which is uh, certainly, I mean, it's, a, it's a, an unfamiliar way of doing things to Westerners, but it, it has its own logic and its own rule. I have to say, I never really found it to be an enormously stressful thing. And when you have really, really good sake coming out at the end, I mean, it, it's pretty, pretty easy to think that maybe this is not such a bad thing and we'll just get on with it. Did you ever think that you would get to be a master brewer? Well, no, because, I mean, um, part, partly, I mean, it, it, J Japanese culture is not very keen on people blowing their own trumpet, I suppose. And uh -huh. so uh, it's probably tactically not a good kind of thing to, to be saying. But even more, more realistically speaking, I mean, um, there, there, are, there are lots of brewers in a sake brewery, but there's only one toji, only one master brewer. Right. Uh, and not everyone who works in a brewery gets to be a master brewer, even if they want to. And so I, obviously I had no way of knowing whether, whether it, was, it was within my, my power to, to, to reach the, skill, the level of skill that you need to be able to do that thing. Mm. Is there a lot of pressure once you've stepped up? Um, well, I mean, to be honest, I always found it quite a lot of pressure even before I stepped oh, up. Really? I mean, yeah, and it's, it's, oh. um, uh, and as I say, the, all, all the processes of sake brewing they, they fit together in very complicated ways. So, mm. I mean, you know, everyone in a brewery has a has a, a part to play, and, and if that doesn't all fit together, then then then, uh, uh, well, how, however um, wonderful a master brewery you've got the tap, if the whole mm. thing doesn't mesh together, then nothing goes right. Um, and my 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 first. Uh, Mentor, he, he he used to say on sort of every other day. It seemed like that that, uh, that sake brewing is a is a matter of uh, experience and sense, almost sixth sense. Oh, okay. Yeah. And the, the the other thing that he he always used to say, and in this job it takes ten years to learn the basics, mm. uh, and twenty years before you really know what's going on. So I'm I'm just starting to sort of get the hang of it now. <laughs> Here is the koji room. Preparing koji puts the master brewer's skills to the test more than any other task. The koji room is kept at over 30 degrees Celsius and humidity inside may reach 100%. It's almost like a sauna. Work here is usually done bare chested. And the work begins with the cooling of freshly steamed rice. The key to creating a high quality koji is the moisture content of the rice at the moment when the koji spores are sprinkled over it. To ensure the conditions are optimal for mould growth, the rice is needed to drive out excess water. 
Harper visits the Corgi room frequently, even though the mashing process is going on at the same time. Brewing keeps him pretty busy. 30 minutes later, he judges that the rice is still too moist. He continues kneading the rice, helping it to dry. <laughs> now it's three and a half hours after the rice was initially spread out. Harper makes his fourth check. When sufficient moisture has gone out of the rice, the sound it makes when it's kneaded changes. ま、わかりますはい。あの、結局大分サバケ、サバケって言ってますんで、あの、表面が乾いてきてますんで。この師匠いつもあの、ま、大体サバケということはあの、手触りのことを基本的に言うんですけど、師匠五感のサバケといつ
And the, the reason is, is that, that that sort of funny thing I'm doing there with the, with the can is it, there are spores of them all in there. And if you have people sort of uh, laughing or sneezing or giggling in there, you, you, they, they fly all over the place and you don't know where they're going. Oh my God. So we have this sort of um, peculiar couple of minutes after, after each round where everyone is there hoping that they don't sneeze. And because the, the actual operatives are not so much people as microorganisms, you, ha you have to do things at the pace of the microorganisms. Uh, which doesn't always not always the most comfortable pace for for people to um, be involved with. And what we saw you doing there was just that's just one part of the process, yeah. right? Fairly early on. Yes. Yeah. And there's a, a whole number of different things that go on after that, right? And and before, yeah. I mean, and before you, you, well. you, have, okay. you, have to, you have to polish the rice first of all, then wash it and steam it before you even get to the. Uh, to the cordy room, um, and then then there are sort of various stages of propagating yeast and mashing and pressing and all these other bits and pieces that you all have to fit in together. How many different types of sake do you make all together? Well, if in sort of ba basic uh, style terms, we do about fifteen different things here. This is um, the um, the brewing schedule for January. So if you if you look at this, I mean, you can see some of the things that are going on here. What what we have down here, these different colours, they're all all different. Um, uh, varieties of rice, oh, okay. um, and for for one of the most famous rice varieties is Yamada Nishiki. This one here, yep. uh, and you can see this is Yamada Nishiki, forty percent. So this is this is this is the figure that remains of the the grain after we've polished. Mm. So uh, we we have different products which are made from the the same variety of rice, but a different degree of polish will will give you a a, a different finished product. Mm. Um, and we we actually bottle limited editions from each of those when when we first press them as well. So. If you if you sort of start listing it all up, it gets into three figures quite comfortably. Over a hundred. Yes. Yeah. Out of interest, do you use all locally grown rice? Um, this is made with uh, organic rice, which is actually um, grown in the in the next township where this this splendid bird, which is the uh, the great white oriental stork, where uh -huh. it, it's an endangered species and it lives there. It's this huge carnivorous bird, uh, and so if you use a lot of um, agricultural chemicals in the fields, then then you 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 have fewer. Uh, newts and frogs and things, which are the ah, the food for the birds, and okay. so we we okay. we use uh, organically grown rice from there and, and make a donation from each bottle to to uh, help protect the stalks' environment, which is a, a really nice thing to be able to do. Mm. Uh, it, it's a the whole the whole whole business of sake brewing is, is as I say it's it's a very agricultural business. What for you is like the key to what makes good sake? It's very important for people to work together, just in terms of obvious conventional teamwork uh, mm. and and it, it sounds kind of philosophical to be talking about harmony as a an element of uh, successful brewing but it, it it's frightening to see mm. how if, if you if you do get friction between the brewers um, then mm. the sake that comes out tends to reflect that sadly interesting here we go harper has chosen a sake to share with our presenter this particular one tastes quite different at different temperatures and they'll taste that difference for themselves. Of course, we're supposed to pour each other. Yeah, aren't we, we, so we better do it properly. Let's do that, shall we? All right. Thank you. There we go. Cheers. Okay. Cheers. It kind of releases the flavour in a slightly different way mm. when it's warm. It, it still has the same punch. But there's a kind of softness as well. I, exactly. It's kind of hard to explain. No, I, I, th I think mm. you. I think you're right on the money. I mean, that's that's what it does for me. Is is it? It softens out. It makes the whole thing a lot. You, it's still the same sake, as you say. It still has uh, a fair punch to it. But it, mm. it, you get all this sort of gentle warmth coming up from it. Mm. Why did you choose to drink this one now? The main thing was that it's this time of year when it's cold, so I wanted something hot. Okay. Even the same sake works at certain different ways over a different range of temperatures. And the other thing is, is that is that sake is so good with food. So, for example, with this sake, what kind of non-Japanese food do you think this would go well with? Well, it, it, it's, a, it's a fairly uh, robust flavoured sake. So, I mean, it'll go really well with cooked meats, grilled meats, and that kind of thing. Mm. I'm, I'm really fond of, of this kind of slightly earthy sake with, with any, anything with mushrooms in. Ah, OK. Yeah, it's great with cheese as well. Uh-huh. Yeah. Sake is not a drink that a lot of young Japanese go for these days, uh, no, unfortunately, no. Yeah. I think. Is there anything that you think you can do to help change that? Well, I mean, I, I think one of the great joys of sake is, is, is that, that you, can do, you can drink it in so many different ways. 
Uh, and I, I, I think the, the images of sake tend to be very limited. Mm. The, really, the, the, the big thing is, is to, to um, find a way into a room with a, pe- a load of people who think they don't like sake and actually get them to sit down and drink it. And, right. uh, and so we're, we're, we're doing all these things to show people what, 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 is, what, what is the enormous range of sake and what the possibilities are and how many different ways there are to have fun with it. Mm. Yeah, I think if if you give me a room with a hundred people who who say they don't like sake, I have every confidence that I can send nine of nine, ninety of them home thinking thinking that maybe they do after all. Right. The last question: What to you is Japan? Yeah. The, there's this verb in Jap- in Japanese to 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 means to to go home, kairu. Uh huh. And um, in in a Japanese context, when when you go home to the place that you're family originally came from then then this is this is called going home to the to the to the uh, original birthplace of the family a sato gairi going home uh-huh. and so of course when i go home to the uk that that's what i'm doing is i'm i'm going home to the the ancestral home and after i've been in japan for a few years i found myself struggling with talking to japanese friends and colleagues because i i found myself having to use this verb to go home in in two directions which is not really very logical uh-huh and so I suppose at some point, um, quite a long time ago now, Japan ceased to be um, another place and became one, one of the, the two places I go home to. Thank you very much. A day's work has ended. Harper and his workers play a sake tasting game. The varieties they are tasting include one from a different brewery. They have to figure out which it is. The men take this game very seriously, but one of them guesses wrong. <laughs> Harper has spent the last 20 years in the sake brewing trade. He and his team of four work in harmony focused on the goal of creating the ultimate Japanese sake. Next time on Begin Japanology, Kabuki. With its stunning costumes and striking makeup, Kabuki is uniquely beautiful and entertains in countless different ways. We'll see what it reveals about the Japanese sense of beauty.